video. Today I want to describe to you the key components that built the 2015 Oscar winning animated short feast. And that's what that is. So I know all of you guys remember the little shorts that would come before our favorite Disney movies like um, Jerry's Game, which was the old man playing chess against himself, or um, Luxo Jr. that came before Toy Story 2 about the two lamps, the desk lamps. Um, and that's what this is. It's called and it comes before Big Hero 6. In my speech today, I'll begin by introducing to you the director of this short film and explaining the story behind it. I will then go on to discuss the artwork. Um, I will begin to discuss the artwork and the looks that made this production possible. So, um, where did this idea begin and from? The director um, slash artist of who created this film was named Patrick Osborne. <coughs> According to the article written in gworks.com, Patrick studied at Ringling College of Art and Design in Florida. After schooling, he went to animation from Sony Animation Studios. He Sony Animation Studios and now he works at Walt Disney Studios. Um, some previous works that he's done are Bold, Tangled, and he was the animation supervisor for the 2013 Oscar winning animated short Paper Man. For this, for Feast, this, he was the main director and it tells the story of the growing love between two people um, through the food they eat um, and through the eyes of them, their dog, Winston. He, in this film, he wanted to do something different. He was going for... Um, in this quote from the article titled, An Animation Masterclass of Patrick Osborne, Director of the Beast website, um, from the website Film Divider, he says, I'm interested in making something that's different. It could easily feel that every feature, every short, and every experiment done with modern technology is starting to be the same. That my parents couldn't tell the difference between what's coming out of one studio or the other. So my instinct is to go the other way, to create something that is beautiful and which connects people but doesn't look the same as everything else. And that's what he tried to do with this short. This hunger to want to do something new was fed by the work of Jeff Turley. Um, he worked, Osborne was inspired by this artist because his creatures and environments um, had a painted look to them. Um, this is um, Patrick. Patrick Osborne got to work with him, got to work with Jeff Turley in a program called Sparks Program at Disney Animation Studios. It happens once a month during, it happens once a year and for about a month, some of the artists at the animation studio get to work on anything, like just do something that's completely their own. So Patrick Osborne worked with Jeff Turley to create a trailer for a non-existent movie called um, Pet. That's what this is right here. Um, the only catch is that for, that for this program is that they have to present it to the company at the end of the month. And um, after they pitched this to the company, it was very, it was taken very well. And that's where, that's when he was allowed to, he was directed to make this short with the same sort of feel to it. 
In an article by Oliver Fink, Franklin Patrick says, there's something interesting about the choices that people make in character. Caricature that's more fascinating than just doing something that's real. So I thought, well, I wanted to do that with motion and CG animation. And that's where we start, went from there. Um, during the production of Feast, the motion and color were very important to him as well. Um, Patrick Osborne was looking for a feel that was childlike. And so he was looking for something that was childlike in his work. And so for the motion in this film, he wanted it to be kind of choppy and and kind of jumpy. So he used an app called One Second Every Day, which for a year he filmed his uh, one second of his dinner. And it was kind of, it just would jump from place to place and you could see the blurry images in the background of people in the background. So that's where he got his inspiration for the motion in the film. Um, color was also a huge part of this film. And during the beginning of the short, there's no green at all. Um, but after, after the man in the story meets the love, like the girl asked, girl character, um, there tends to be green in the story, so a lot of the color follows the, what's happening in the story. Um, lastly, the team was very important in the production of this. There was 60 people total, and all of them were working on, not all of them were working at the same time. It was just a lot, but just everyone working in different things at different times, and it worked really well um, for this speech, um, for, the, for the short. Um, so from the speech, you've learned about the creative aspects that built the animated short, um, from the inspiration and story behind it, of the artwork. Um, so I hope that you've enjoyed learning about just one example of the animated stories that we've all grown up. Stella, what did you think? Um, I thought that some of your strongest points were um, all the, the, the information that you gave us and the quotes that were provided from um, the creators of the film. Um, in the beginning, you have a, a pretty clear layout and you have a, a good um, like attention, attention device. Um, but I feel like once you started getting into your speech, you um, you kind of neglected your, your pieces and your, your point because I felt a little confused in the middle when you just kept giving us a lot of quotes. Um, I feel like you could have done a lot um, smoother transitions and uh, sometimes I felt like you were reading to us instead of talking to us. I think you could work on that a little more. Um, but over my overall opinion is that um, you had a lot of sources and they were cited pretty well. And um, it was, it was pretty well. <laughs> Okay, well, I think you picked out some of the things that I thought were uh, a little bit problematic also. Let's talk about stuff that uh, is good to begin with. I, I think the visual images that you have are good. I, you did skip over the one that you had in the uh, thing trying to explain what the shorts were in the first place. Uh, and so that that's a little bit of a stumble, but uh, we got a good image of the artist and the kind of the background characterizations that he had. I, th I think in the second half of the speech, there's not as much of that. We don't really get anything about uh, how the caricatures that are being drawn are supposed to tell us something different about, you know, like you mentioned, it's supposed to be childlike or uh, that it's supposed to maybe be a little bit primitive because of the jerkiness of the, the image. And I'm thinking, well, 
that would have been maybe a, a little clip to see or uh, pictures of something other than Winston. Uh, you know, Winston's the dog, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I, for a second, I had him confused with the volleyball. That's a, that's a little bit different. That's Wilson. All right. <laughs> with, with Winston the dog, um, you know, we never see the other two main characters in in the in your visualization here, and they're they're important. And, and one you know, one of them is the is the one who's going through the change in the story there, and that's the one who's being caricatured the most, and we don't get any reference to that. The relationship that you had, that you mentioned with the other artist is an interesting one. What they got from that other artist, I don't know. You know I mean, you kind of explain it, but I'm not sure I even see it in that little picture of the uh, fake trailer that they created for this other film uh, that doesn't exist. So, what did that person do? Jeff Turley is his name. Yes. Yeah. You know, so, what did Jeff Turley do to influence Patrick? You know, to to get him to visualize something differently. You know, if we could, that might have been one of those things where you could say, well, you could see the work that Patrick did in some of these earlier things, Tangled and um, uh, Jerry's Game or whatever other ones that he worked on. And you say, you know, he's responsible for these sorts of things. But look at the image and how different it is here in Feast. And notice how the animation, it's not smooth, it's not realistic, it's not lifelike, it is, you know, exaggerated to make particular points. And the caricatures are just, that's because of the work that he did with uh, Jeff Turley. And here's an example of Turley's work. And you could see then maybe a little bit more where that influence came from. As it was, I know that there's something that's there. I didn't think it was as clearly explained as it needed to be. I think uh, she's right. You do a nice job citing information. There's, you did some research on this. But it's not the stuff that's most valuable to explaining what you're talking about. This is, I don't know if other people are interested. I love animation. I'm interested in those kinds of things. I, I think I've told you guys, I saw all the animated shorts that were nominated this year. So, you know, that kind of stuff is fascinating to me. And so I'm, I'm a natural for your subject. But what I felt like I got a little bit more of, you know, uh, Jeff and Patrick's, you know, weekend at Disney <laughs> than I got, you know, how they were influenced by one another, that kind of thing. And so I, I felt that like that was just a little bit underdeveloped. Uh, and then I'm going to agree with her. Let's go back to some of the kind of negative sorts of things that the the delivery is a little bit problematic. I don't want to pick on you, you know, because I want everybody to do a good job. But you start speaking to the top of the screen. <laughs> you start leaning on the demo station. You just look like I would rather be any place but where I am right at this moment. And you don't want you want you want us to know. I'm talking about this because I think it's interesting. I want you to feel the same way about it instead of kind of pulling back a little bit. And I think that you do a lot of things while you're speaking that tend to suggest that. We're going to work on that, so it's not, not a huge deal right now. But when you watch it, you're going to notice that, I think. And that, those will be the kinds of things that you'll put in your own evaluation if you put comments on uh, the YouTube channel. All right, thank you. <laughs>